Hey, what's up everybody? Chris here. So today, you can see it on the screen, we're going to talk about AutoGPT. Uh, first things first, I'm going to walk you through how to get it running. Once we get it running, I'm going to show you a brief example of it running. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of what this tool is, what it represents. Talk a little bit about the hype surrounding it, and that will be the video. So let's just get straight into it and get this thing running. So the first thing we have to do is clone the repository. So we're going to go to the green code button here. Grab the HTTPS address, and then we'll hop over into the terminal. Now that we're in the terminal, we can git clone this repo. And we're going to want to go ahead and CD into that. So if you see, there's this .env.template file. So we're going to want to use this command, mv.env.template space .env. And that's going to create a new .env that is copied from the template. Now that we have done that, we can go ahead and nano into that .env. We do have to replace a few values here with our own information. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I will be back when it is done. Okay, so that is done. Now, just to be clear, in order to get this going, we did have to get a pinecone.io API key as well as a default location. So uh, in order to do that, I just headed over to pinecone.io created an account, I went to a default project, created an API key, copied it from here, and then this is our default region. Perfect, okay. So now that we've got those things set up, we can head back over here, and we're gonna need to, of course, install some requirements. We use the command pip install space dash r space requirements.txt. This is going to install every line of the requirements.txt provided to us in the repo. Once that is done and installed, we are good to run the actual script. So we can use Python space scripts slash main dot py to do that. You're going to be asked if you want to continue to be entrepreneur GPT. You can go ahead and create your own bot by entering N, pressing enter, and then we get to make our own bot. So I'm going to name this thing. Uh, you know what? Entrepreneur bot's pretty cool. But what if instead we were a entre entrepreneur GPT. So you might be wondering what the difference is between an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur. Well, entrepreneur is an AI designed to autonomously develop and run businesses associated with manure. Um, and what are our goals? Goal number one is to acquire, is to get as much Manure as possible. Goal two is to sell it for big money. Goal three, we don't need any more goals. That's enough goals. So using memory of type local cache. So it looks like this is not hitting my Pinecone account. Not exactly sure why. Doesn't matter though. We're still using local cache. To be clear, the author of this particular repo is fantastic. This is a great program. Whatever else, you know, I think about it in terms of what, if this is AGI or not, you know, that doesn't matter. You will notice that we get this feedback. We get our bot's thoughts, which is I should start by researching the current market value for manure. We get reasoning why, and the reasoning here makes sense to me. In order to sell manure for a good price, I need to have an idea of its current market value. Researching the market will help me determine how to price my manure competitively. That seems pretty true. We come up with a plan. It's got two steps right now. Step number one, research the internet for current market prices. Step number two, use the information collected to determine a competitive price for the manure. Criticism. So this is the best part, in my opinion, which is that the bot will criticize itself. We know that that's effective because of papers like self-refine. As I showcased in an earlier video, that kind of tactic and strategy definitely works for the large language models we're working with, which is GPT-4 for the most part. So we're always gonna get these kinds of responses, right? So we're gonna get the thoughts, reasoning for the thoughts. We're gonna get a plan that's gonna have some number of steps and then we're gonna get a critique. So it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool system, right? Basically, this is an LLM that is prompting itself with these things that also has access to actions outside of just, you know, returning text. So in this case, it's suggesting that we Google something. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it do that. Googling is where everyone starts, so it makes sense that our entrepreneur bot also starts there. All right, perfect. So after a quick Google, it decides 
I need to figure out where we can get this manure. The reasoning being, you can't sell manure if you don't have any to sell. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Uh, we have a plan of three steps now. Number one, search for any suppliers of manure near me. Number two, contact those suppliers to gauge the accessibility of manure for transport. And number three, compile a list of potential suppliers for future transactions. I mean, this is like genuinely great, right? So as much as it's kind of a meme that we're using this example of manure, it is true that this is, it, it has made good decisions so far. There is a criticism, which is you have to have sources of manure to sell to potential customers. And, you know, transporting all that manure might be expensive. So uh, it is going to Google manure suppliers in my city. Now, I don't I don't know what it set as my city. Uh, I assume that in Google, that's a short hand for, you know, where I'm at, which is Toronto. So hopefully it is. Uh, looking through these, I don't see anything specific to, I don't see anything specific to Toronto, but Lowe's and Home Depot are definitely Canadian. So they might also be American, but they're also definitely Canadian. Cool. Okay. Well, it's definitely reasoning something. So basically after that Google, uh, where, where can we find the manure, right? Where can we find that brown gold? Uh, it has given us this response of now that I have gathered some information on current market value. We got to assess the cost of producing manure. So it looks like we might be deciding to go into the manure cre creation business, which is quite interesting. Bit of a pivot, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Knowing the cost of producing manure will help me price it accurately to ensure I make a good profit. Hey, that's true. That's true. We got a new plan. Conduct research on the cost. Use the information to determine a competitive price. And look for ways to reduce the cost to increase profits. I mean, this is sound businessing from our butt. You'll notice the output broke. Who cares? We also need to make sure the cost of producing manure remains low enough. You can still sell, sell it. I mean, yes, true. So we're going to Google cost of producing manure. Kind of what happened is that we were on the buying and selling, but we were going to kind of like, you know, be a reseller of manure. But now it, it looks like we're going into the production game. We might have to purchase livestock at this point, right? So uh, we're, we're, we're getting into it. Okay, so now that we've got the information on the cost of producing manure, we got to assess the market value. I thought we already assessed the market value. That's fine, though. So we got to research the market value, use the information to determine a competitive price for manure, and then consider ways to increase the quality of the manure. We're looking to generate that high-quality manure now. I need to ensure that the price of manure remains competitive enough that I can still sell it and make it... I mean, true. All this is true. We're going to let it Google the market value again. It probably forgot because it just did that three prompts ago. So it probably just had a temporary forget there. All right. We're looking at how to reduce costs to maximize profits. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, we're going... Okay. So a moment ago... Okay. So this is a quick progression, right? First off, we were going to be resellers. Now we're going large-scale manure production. Knowing how to produce manure efficiently will help me reduce production costs, maximize profits. I mean, that's true. Research the most efficient ways to produce. I, yeah, absolutely. We're going back to Google. We're four Googles deep here and it doesn't look like we're going to stop. What's interesting too is that like it hasn't keyed in yet to the fact that if we have all these kind of animals that are going to produce manure, we probably could also, you know, like uh, if they're cows, for instance, we could milk them. A lot of lot of different revenue streams that we could build into this now. I mean, we're 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 kind of like one tractor away from starting a farm here. Based on the search results, it is clear that the market value of manure can vary significantly depending on the method of application of the nutrient content. Should examine my methods for obtaining manure to ensure I'm getting the highest quality. We're going straight back to Googling how to get the highest quality manure. So it feels like we're kind of in a loop now, right? We're kind of, we're, we, we learn how to make high quality manure and then we say, okay, so, but how, now how do we make cash with that? And then we realize, well, we need really high quality stuff. Right, so, oh, here we, oh, here we go. Okay, so now, yes, we're on to something. We're coming back. The bots realized maybe producing the manure is too expensive. We could just get farmers to give us manure. Okay, cool, 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 cool. I like that. So we're going straight back to Google for that. Straight back to Google. We're also considering getting it from the local waste management. 
which is interesting. All right, and, and now we're back to high quality manure. So I'm gonna stop this at this point. I mean, obviously this is kind of a silly example, right? But I, I, it showcases something that I really want to kind of leave with you as we're done playing around with AutoGPT, which first of all is fantastic. It's a cool tool, it's really awesome. It has the ability to generate new agents. It has the ability to do things beyond just Googling. You know, it can save files, it can read files, it can interact with all sorts of different things. It's a really cool tool. It is not AGI. It's not close to AGI. And, you know, we, we, we can talk about if this is the path to AGI for a thousand years, but uh, this is not yet there. It is really cool. And I do want to make it clear that the author of this repository is not at all claiming that AutoGPT is AGI. There has been some hype building around the tool as like mini AGI or almost AGI. And I don't think that we're really there yet. Uh, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't predict the future. I'm not going to say this is definitely not the path to AGI, but in its current state, we're just not there. It is cool. It is awesome. It's neat. And, you know, I, so clearly we used a very silly example here. It's more to showcase what the tool is, how it works, how it interacts, than it is to really, like, uh, extol the virtues of or power that this kind of a tool can bring. Uh, that's up to you to decide, right? It's a very free form kind of tool. And it's up to you to decide how to use it best to complement your workflow, to make you better at the thing you want to be better at, if it can do that for you. Uh, it's going to take a lot of experimentation. It's like prompt engineering turbo, right? One thing that I really like about it, though, is that it's beautifully designed. Uh, it, it, it says exactly what you want it to say. It shows it in a very accessible format. And even though it's a CLI tool, it looks good. So, you know, overall, I, I enjoy playing around with this tool. Uh, again, is it AGI? No. Uh, is it close? Not really. Is it the path forward? Who knows, right? Um, maybe, maybe building these large networks of LLMs that all communicate with each other is the way forward. Uh, I certainly know a certain system that is built up of constituent parts that each handle specific functions and have interrelated connections along with sharing memory. You might have heard of it. It's the human brain. Um, you know, so there, is this definitely not the path forward? I don't think it's I don't think you can say that right now, um, but uh, it's really cool and it's a lot of fun to play with and it can do useful things like we didn't showcase it here, but you know, in terms of ideation for things like uh, Twitter or LinkedIn or coming up with an idea of a project to do or guiding you on something like that, it's actually a fantastic tool. It's just kind of like self-refined plus plus in that regard. So definitely try it. Huge props to the author of the repository. It's stellar. And uh, I hope you guys do cool stuff with it. And if you do, let me know. I'd love to see what cool stuff you're out there doing. And uh, if you like this video, click like and uh, subscribe or whatever. If you like this kind of video, leave a comment so I know to, to keep making them. This one's a little bit different than what I would normally do. It's less so like a tutorial and more has this kind of like opinion built through it. But uh, I just feel like it's important to talk about these tools and what they can do and what they can't do. So from myself and from Entrepreneur GPT, uh, I wish you all the best day and we'll see you in the next one.